Uh, oh, Lord, here's what you... Hey, what? There used to be a song as like, fine boy, no pimple. It's not fine boy, no pimples. It's fine girl, no pimple. And I know, I know, I'm being pedantic. Come and beat me. When men try to toast women, like it has to be... It's like we're Shakespeare. Yvonne. Hmm? Yvonne. Yvonne. How many times did I call your name? Eh? My recent videos have been on heavy and controversial subjects and I have more topics like that that I intend to discuss but this video is a break from the controversy to discuss the light subject of Nigerian slang as presented by my very sister from another mother, Yvonne Oji. Vanity Fair released a video of her explaining some common Nigerian slang and here we'll be reacting to it and learning how to speak Nigerian. So let's go. First word, shine your eye. Okay, this is what every Nigerian auntie, mother, big cousin tells you whenever you go to any wedding function, especially if you're a single over, I don't know, 12. Make sure you shine your eye. And when you go into a room, just shine your eye. No, no, that's not correct. You can use shine your eyes in the context she presented, but for the most part, that's not how Nigerians use the slang. Shine your eyes simply means be watchful, pay attention, observe your surroundings, keep your eyes peeled. It's a warning that you get when you are going to a new place or if you are doing something that requires watchfulness. In Nigeria, if you don't want to become the victim of circumstance, you better shine your eyes. Don't be 30 at a wedding and you're not shining your eye. You're not serious. No, don't just be a woman and be 30 and not be married. You don't have to be at a wedding. Just don't be in Nigeria. Not just that. Don't even have Nigerian parents. You don't need to go to weddings and shine your eyes. You will go to prayer meetings, my dear. You need deliverance. They are following you from the village, isn't they? You they crazy? You, you they crazy? This basically means, are you crazy? Usually you use this in a sentence when somebody's being mad, disrespectful, just really stupid, or just ask you a question that you they crazy? Eh? Are, are you are you okay? Is everything okay? Are you you they crazy? As in you gotta be crazy, bro. Cause you know who I am. Yes, that's correct. You they crazy just means you are crazy. But you they crazy means are you crazy? You know how you say it is crucial and can change the meaning. If you say it with an angry tone like you they crazy, that's an insult. But if you say it with a friendly tone like guy you they crazy, so, guy something they do you they crazy, guy I swear. You know if you say it like that, that's a compliment. Ah, bad dude. It's a guy or a girl, they mad fresh. Gucci down to the socks. Ah, you ain't bad dude. Hey, uncle. <laughs> bad dude. This is when you go to a function and everybody is just looking right. You gotta recognize the the badoness that is in the presence. Ah, bad dude. And you gotta gotta emphasize that double D, that duh, duh, duh. Yes, but but not quite. I haven't seen or had anyone use it to refer to a woman. And it is the original title for Lamy Day. He's the original bad dude. But people still use it to refer to others as a way of saluting them. And it often has nothing to do with how you are dressed. If you have little money and your friends know, <laughs> now you are bad dude. And you don't have to look the part. Salutation in Nigeria is it's just flattery. I mean, we like to flatter each other in this country. You can be dressed in rags and someone will still call you bado just to make you feel good or to get something from you. Yeah, I have one of these. Uh, everybody's not blessed uh, to have a, a yash, a Nigerian heirloom, if you will. Uh, if you have a nice yash, you're a bado. <laughs> No, you are not. Nyash doesn't make you a bad do. And your spelling of nyash is wrong. It is nyash. It starts with an N, as in N-Y-A-S-H. What is yash? Whatever it is you are spelling there. When a woman walks into a room and it's like, ha, see nyash. Because you know, the Nigerian buttocks, they just be, they got a mind of their own. They walk in and you just, da 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 brr. It's like a drum. It's like a brr da 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 So your nyash is like a drum beat. Mm, to all my Yoruba women. Yes, so Yoruba women. Those women are blessed, okay? God bless them with Ikebe Super. Eh? Also known as Nyash. Also known as Botox. Ah, uh, oh Lord, here's what you... Hey, what? Oh no, oh no. Oh no. Yvonne, what did you say? Oh Lord, It's Olodo. Here's what you don't want to be. You don't want to be an Olodo. Because an Olodo is just the fool. You know what? You're just a fool. You're just, you're just dumb. No, no. <laughs> Olodo is not a fool. Olodo is a retard, someone with learning difficulties, someone slow and dull. That's the Yoruba word for those people. In Igbo, we say itibolibo, which is a dumb, unintelligent person. A fool, on the other hand, is a person lacking in prudence or judgment. You've asked someone to do something for you. It's a very simple situation and they failed time and time again. And you're just like, are you an Olodo? 
Well, as an insult, you call someone Olodo when they don't know something that they are supposed to know. It is mostly used in a school setting. If a teacher asks you a question and you get it wrong, you are Olodo. <laughs> this one is Ami Boy. Just like Ami Boy and you're a gossip. Just busybody walking in your Ami Boy like you. Yvonne is just butchering every non Igbo word that shows up on her screen. It's not Ami Boy, it's Ami Boy. Do you want to offend robo people now? Anyway, Ami Boy originally is the robo word for the favorite wife in a polygamous marriage. One thing an Ami Boy in that culture is known for is being the first to break bad news or give her husband the gist of everything going on in his household while ignoring her household chores. So, by extension, robo people use the word Ami Boy to refer to a female who doesn't mind her business but spend her time you know gossiping about other people today it is used all over nigeria as the pigeon word for gossip i'm a boy it's not just the person who gossips okay the act of gossiping itself is called i'm a boy in nigerian pigeon <laughs> you definitely don't want to be an ashe <laughs> i don't know why i'm getting tickled by these words but ashe is the uh, what we like to call a woman of the night she's a street walker she gallivants Basically, she's a prostitute, y'all. It's, it's Asha. <laughs> and now, we call people Asha Wolves who are not even prostitutes. It's just like, you're just, it's like if you're that chick, you, what Americans would call a fat, maybe. Look at Asha Wolves like you. And anytime something is said with five fingers, never good. At this point, Asha Wolves or Asha Wolves is not just a Nigerian slang. It is a West African slang. But you originated from the Yoruba word Ashe or Wo. Together, it becomes Ashe Wo, the Yoruba word for a prostitute or a promiscuous woman. But today, it doesn't take much for you to end the title. Oh. If you are twerking on Instagram or TikTok, you are Ashe Wo. If you dress like Cardi B, you are Ashe Wo. If you are being flirtatious, you are Ashe Wo. As a woman, if you are wealthy and influential and there's no explanation for how you made your money, nne, they will call you Correct Ashe Wo. <laughs> This is basically the warning. The Nigerian, I'm giving you one more chance because you don't want me to blow. So before I get real upset, I'm going to tell you, respect, respect you. yourself. <laughs> Again, it's with a squinted eye and a point. And then it's usually accompanied by a my friend. When Nigerians say my friend, they, they don't mean that as a term of endearment. You're not their friend. So this would really be my friend, hey, <laughs> respect yourself. <laughs> Yes, she's right 100%. Respect yourself is a warning. It means act accordingly. Do what you are supposed to do or just get out of my way. And yes, my friend in Nigeria is not a term of endearment at all. But it's not just my friend though. Words like auntie, uncle, madam, sir. Nigerians can use those words in a very disrespectful way. One time I had someone say, in a heated exchange, sir, with all due respect, you are very stupid. So again, see your life. It can be interpreted in a good way in a negative way. Negative way first. When you say something out of pocket or do something out of pocket, somebody who's looking at you can be like, see your life. Just see, just see your life. What are you doing with your life? Like, you're not gonna make it. Like, just look at your everlasting life. Just yes, that's Nigerians for you. That's 100% Nigerians. Nigerians will borrow words from the King James Bible just to insult you. <laughs> Nigerians, like, curse people out by, like, like wanting them to analyze themselves, right? Just see your life. Are you happy with it? It's like a TED talk, like am I in therapy? Yeah, see your life is often used when someone says or does something that's obviously wrong or makes an obvious mistake and you just want to rub it in. It often follows that look of disappointment that she talks about like, hmm, see your life. Just, just look at your life. This life you are living is this life and we also say to ourselves or when we are talking about ourselves like see my life or hey see my life what kind of life is this what am i doing to myself what have i done to my life ah, i love my people oh fine boy when you go to a wedding and you have shined your eye and you see a what fine boy how fine boy, boy like this there used to be a song uh, it's like Fine boy, no pimple. I love your smile, yeah, I love your dimple. So yeah, if you're a fine boy, no pimple, that means you have a fresh face. Ah, fine boy, like anyhow. Yes, yeah, so fine boy, fine bobo, bobo we fine, die. Tall, dark, and handsome. The typical spec of the average Nigerian girl. The man of their dreams. And the song she's referring to is Tease Me by Whiskey. And it's not fine boy, no pimples. It's fine girl, no, no pimple. pimple. And I know, I know, I'm being pedantic. Come and beat me. Longer throat. This is me. This is basically every relationship when a woman orders something and then she sees her guys 
plate and this is like, hey, can I have some of yours? She would be called a longa throats. We want more. We want something that we don't currently have. We want what's on your plate. Like just one got throws. We're not, we're not satisfied with just what we have. Cause what's mine is mine and what's yours is also mine. Uh, yes, but, but not quite. Longer throat is gluttony. One of the seven deadly sins. A person who eats too much has longer throat. You know, those body positivity ladies on TikTok, they have longer throat. You can use food and eh, to tie those people's destiny. You can use food to kidnap them and they love, hey, I mean, they love to eat from someone else's plate. That's the only food that can satisfy them this is good i love saying this because this basically means there's no problem no wahala there's no beef ah is, is there any wahala no wahala if you're at the marketplace you're trying to haggle you know the vendor is kind of like come on man you got to give me this I, I don't i don't want beef i don't, I don't want wahala and you say no wahala and it's just the price i'm trying to pay is not the price you're agreeing to there's no problem no wahala yes that's correct wahala is a word in both hausa and yoruba and they borrowed it from the word wala in Arabic, which means fright or terror. In Nigerian pidgin, it means trouble or problem. When a Nigerian says no wahala, it means no trouble or no problem. But it can mean the opposite. You see, Nigerians like to speak in irony. So if a Nigerian says, oh no, it's fine, it's fine, it's just, it's good, it's great. No, no wahala, no wahala, continue what you are doing. Kosi wahala, koko. Hmm. If you hear a Nigerian talk like that, my brother, there is trouble. Hey, very big problem. And when they say continue like that, like when they say, hmm, continue. <laughs> Don't continue, just, just stop. That is a threat. They are telling you to stop or something is going to happen to you. <laughs> I love this one. This is Nawa for you. I interpret it when I say, when I tell people God bless, like God bless it. You know, God bless it, girl. Mm. Now, for you, just means like I'm. I'm sorry for you. This is I'm sorry for just, just wow. Now, for you, like see your life. Uh, she's correct, but some of the things she said are not correct. Now, for you is often used when you feel someone is overreacting. You may tell them, guy, now for you, it never reached like that. Or when they do something annoying, you may react by saying, guy, now what for you? Wait till be this one now. Or when people are just extremely evil or ridiculous, like the Nigerian government or those university presidents during the congressional hearing on anti-Semitism. It is a context-dependent decision. Now what for these people who, hey, nah, some people are wicked. I know, Sabi. This is something that you really actually want more Nigerians to say. It means I don't know. Nigerians will never, ever, ever tell you that they don't know. Hey, how do I get to downtown? You want them to be like, ah, I know Sabi, so that you can now go find somebody who does know directions. But no, they're ah, I Sabi am. Yes, no, I Sabi. You want to go, and which highway is it? Find the highway, and when you get there, that's how you get to downtown. You're like, so you didn't, you didn't give me any information whatsoever. Like, this is what you want every tailor. Like, every Nigerian can feel this right now. When you go to the tailor and you show them a picture, and you're like, Uncle Oga, can you make this outfit? You want them to say, I know Sabia, Madam. I'm sorry, I know Sabi. But they will say, I Sabia. No, give me. I can make it nice, nice. And then two weeks later, you go pick up your outfit, and you're like, What is this? What is this? <laughs> First of all, whose size is this? Why am I a size negative four? So we just need more honesty is what I'm trying to tell you. Tailors will never be honest in this country. In Nigeria, honesty is the worst policy, especially artisans. They are physically incapable of telling the truth. And one major skill you need to learn to survive in this country is the ability to detect BS. Because, hmm, my brother, people will tell you stories that touch the heart. And it's all lies. Lies to extort money from you or to get you involved in something that will leave you in serious, painful regret. In this country, shine your eyes. Tufiakwa is, God forbid. Now, you can't just say, ah, Tufiakwa. You gotta say Tufiakwa with all the energy in the world, and it has to be accompanied by a finger snap. So if somebody says, ah, you will not live long. Ah, Tufiakwa, God forbid. Like, I, like you're rebuking it. You will never get married. Tufiakwa, ah, uh -uh. you are a worker of inequity. You are an enemy of progress. <laughs> enemy of progress is, it, it speaks for itself. Basically, I don't want whatever you're putting on me. God forbid bad things. Mm, actually, and yes, I'm being pedantic, but actually to fear what doesn't mean God forbid. It's just an Igbo exclamation for something negative or abominable. That last part I may not be correct about, but I'm sure definitely 
Tufiakwa is not God forbid. God forbid is Chimekweli Hojo in Igbo or Loromaje in Yoruba. And Tufiakwa can be used in multiple ways. If you hear a terrible news, your first response would be to shout Tufiakwa with the finger snapping, of course. Very important. Or if someone wishes you evil, you shout Tufiakwa with the finger snapping, of course. Also, you can use it when explaining something bad or complaining about something bad. For example, you can say something like, ha, these people are wicked though. They are very heartless. Tufiakwa. Now here you are using it to display disgust or disapproval. You go wounds. Hey, when men try to toast women, like it has to be, it's like we're Shakespeare, you know, we're African Shakespeare. So we can't just say, oh, you look really pretty. No, we have to say, ah, you go wound, As in you are so beautiful, it's gonna hurt me. Ah, you're wounding me. Look at, yeah, she's moving anyhow. Hey, <laughs> auntie, you go wound, though. Yvonne, hmm? Yvonne. Yvonne, how many times did I call your name? Eh? This lady, you just had to get this one wrong. And you were doing so well, oh. You were doing so well. Yes, there is an instance where you use you go wound to talk about someone's beauty. Let's say someone is extremely beautiful, yes. And you want to tell them that they are very beautiful. You say, you go wound them or you go wound person. That is a creative use of the slang. But the typical usage is to say, you will get injured. Parents use it to warn their children. Let's say a child is playing a dangerous play. The parents will tell them, you go wound though. You know, that's a warning. And it's also used to tell people that if they continue what they are doing that you don't like, you will injure them. And the injury can be physical, mental, emotional, psychological, financial, or spiritual when they decide to do witchcraft against you. That is how you go wound is used. So that is it for Nigerian slang with me. And there you have it, some Nigerian slangs for you to remember. And I hope this proves beyond reasonable doubt that I'm indeed a Nigerian, okay? And Yvonne did pretty well. She did very well. Her Nigerian accent is one of the few Nigerian accents from Nigerian Americans that doesn't annoy me. Uh, except for that one time when she said Olodo as Olodo. Hey, that was atrocious. But I forgive you, Nne. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Let me know what you think in the comments. And until the next video, stay blessed.